Huskies and welcome back to the My GBC podcast. Today, we're going to talk about one thing we all want after college, a job. But how do you bridge the gap from college to the workplace? How do you reflect and communicate to employers why everything you have learned makes you worth hiring? Sounds stressful, I know, but there is help right here at George Brown College. Today, we are going to hear from Robert Campiti, who is a career advisor based out on the St. James campus. Welcome, Robert. How are you today? Hey, hi, Arantxa. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm great. So you can tell me in a nutshell what career services is and what it offers to students. We in career services are a service of digital resources, but also people that support uh, students on their career development journey providing workshops for students in the classroom. For example, finding jobs or finding field placements, so resume, cover letter, interview skills, LinkedIn. Uh, it also looks like one-on-one -on -one meetings, and I do a lot of one-on-ones with students as well. And those are very similar topics, but may include things like exploring the labor market through labor market research, exploring other education, having career conversations about you know, where you would like to go, Um, where you'd like to be maybe short term or long term in the future and sort of planning and strategizing how you're communicating your skills, whether that's resumes or through interviews or through through networking. We also provide support to students through our peer coaches. So we have students we've trained uh, and they do on a one on one basis uh, support for students on resume cover letter development and LinkedIn. And we also have a number of self-directed resources, tip sheets, digital tools uh, such as interview stream where you can record yourself in interviews. Uh, GBC Connect Cafe, where you can uh, connect and locate a mentor uh, or other individuals uh, who are either alumni or current students around um, networking. What do you find students struggle with the most when they are starting their job search or how do you assist them with that? So what we do to help students is help them with the plan. So starting with the basics, do you know what you're looking for? You won't find a job if you don't know what you're looking for. Jobs are very tailored to the specific jobs or specific companies you're looking for. And so you need to have those in mind. So we make sure that you're on track with that. That said, your resume needs to be on track, needs to be tailored, your cover letter, your LinkedIn, if you use it. Also in the same way, your, your online presence. And this needs to be looked at by everyone. So if you're going to be using LinkedIn, pretty much nowadays, if you're applying for a job and an employer sees your resume, they're probably going to drop your name into Google to see what comes up. So if they're looking at your Facebook or your Instagram or Twitter or what have you, does the image you're putting out into the world, is that consistent with how you want to be perceived as an individual? So we coach students on that. My first job, I applied for the job and then I ended up getting called for an interview five months after. And that happens sometimes. And so you want to keep track. So you if when you do get calls, you'll be able to, you know, remember who this employer is or be able to look them up for details and not say, who are you? <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. I'm sorry. You, you want to keep track of that. Um, which companies, where do you want to work? Networking is an important part of it. So how do you network? Where do you look for connections around employment? And then setting up your online job search. I think you made like a very good points and key points, actually. They are going to look for your information. So what are you showing them? Yes. Who you want to be and mm -hmm. how you want the people know you. So like the presence should be like very important nowadays. Exactly. So what trends are you seeing in terms of jobs or skills in the labor market these days? So having, as we transition through pandemic and our, our, our labor market and sort of global economies are kind of opening up, there are uh, some areas where there's a lot of growth now. Um, one, and it's probably no surprise if you're listening to news, you'll hear a lot about healthcare. I think healthcare across the board You know, if you look at the experiences that seniors had in long-term care and nursing, um, there is certainly demand for growth in this area. Another area is the construction sector. I mean, if you're in Toronto, you look up 
<laughs> you pretty much see a, a condo in every corner. And so construction trades maybe, but also at construction management across the board. So that is also an area of development. People have been starved for travel and experiences for two years. So hospitality sector is an area of growth where in fact, they're struggling to find people to fill jobs. Toronto is a major tech hub. Uh, and so anything that is data related, digital, artificial intelligence. And so if you have an interest in technology and design, uh, those are definitely uh, job sectors to, to take a look at. Mental health is a huge one, maybe, you know, in part related to healthcare, but mental health services are really important. Um, and so that's definitely an area of growth as well. And then I think two final ones. A city like Toronto, you can't not mention the financial services sector. All of Canada's banks, our pension funds, insurance companies are here. And then um, the green sector, uh, you know, in response to climate change, there is a lot of growth to respond to the imperatives around managing resources. <music> Technical skills are great. Technical skills related to your job, but also computer skills, um, communication tools. We're all using Zoom and other tools to communicate with each other, but also soft skills, um, an appreciation of diversity, uh, equity, adaptability, flexibility, your ability to self-manage. Communication skills are hugely important. And in fact, they're more important than in the past. And I think partly because our economies are more global, we may be working where we're dealing with teams online in different parts of the world. And so having an appreciation of different cultures is important. And also we're much more diverse in terms of age. We still have baby boomers in the workforce and we have generation Y and you, we need to work together. And so, the, and the values are different from one generation to the next. So that means more pressure on having soft skills. Employers can really train for technical skills. It's the soft skills that are ones that you develop over time. So if you could give like just one piece of motivation to all the students who come to see you, what would it be? Yeah, you know, I would say it's important to reflect on how they are motivated and to be um, kind to themselves and to reward themselves um, as they, you know, go through the journey that they are on, whether that's, you know, going out to dinner once a month whether it's connecting with friends, taking a day trip, whatever it is, it is important that you um, find out what those things are and make sure that you build that into uh, build that into your life. Job searching can be difficult. It can be challenging. It can be where you're, you feel you're perceiving a lot of rejection or what's wrong with me, things like that. But uh, it's important to think that All of us have experienced that in the past, and many of us are experiencing that today, particularly in the challenges of our economy today. So, you know, you need to be able to, um, to be kind to yourself and to, uh, to motivate and, uh, you know, and share that with people. And also it's like, look, look at back, look all you have done until you are here. And maybe that dream job, it's going to arrive at some point. So just keep trying, keep pushing. I think sometimes we just realize that we need to also uh, enjoy the process. Yeah. <laughs> so now, if you can give us one tip, so what would it be? Yeah, so um, your, your, your journey at college is really uh, about your career development. And so my tip is always engage with that process as early as possible in your learning experience. And But I'm, when I mean early, I'm really talking semester one. Your learning is, you know, it's not just about getting a resume together and throwing it out there to look for jobs. It's about learning new skills, reflecting on those skills, being able to tell stories, to articulate them in different ways. Um, it's about building networks, uh, you know, developing, setting goals for yourself. Everyone else in your program is meeting the same learning objectives of learning outcomes. How are you going to distinguish yourself from every other applicant? Because uh, there are things undoubtedly that you have accomplished in your learning experiences that will distinguish you or differentiate you from everybody else. Uh, and so you need to be able to understand those and that takes time throughout the, your experience from first semester to last. So I'm I think I'm going to uh, take that tip for myself as well, because <laughs> it's very important to go to the career services. So how 
the students get get in touch with the career services? So currently, uh, all of our services are offered uh, online. Um, we are we are available at uh, the Castelloma campus. Uh, it's every day of the week, Monday through Friday, for short term uh, or very short consultations. But uh, our longer meetings are online uh, for both the career coaches and the career advisors. Um, so. Uh, in order to uh, access our services, go on George Brown's website and visit the Career Services page. You will see the links for the peer coaches and the links for the career advisors. That takes you into GB Careers, where you'll see a schedule and you'll be able to book a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a career advisor if that's what you want to do. Um, and you can see our, um, our digital resources and tip sheets in GB Careers as well. If you want to email us with a question, you can email us uh, at... Uh, careercenter at georgebrown.ca, or if you want to call us, because we pick up the phone too, we're at extension 5301. Okay, thank you so much for this conversation, for all, all the resources that you have. And I feel like I learned a lot, and I hope that lots of students go to you for help and get great jobs as well. So thank you very much, Robert. Thank you. I hope so too. <laughs> Come and visit us. Are you trying to balance school and work? Without doubt, can be very hard. But there are strategies to make things go more smoothly. A family member may be able to take on more domestic tasks while you are away. Talk with your boss. This might seem scary, but the sooner you tell your boss that you are in school, the better they will be able to make accommodations. Streamline your task. If you have a school project, make it about something you do at work. Find more tips at the link in our show notes. Thanks for joining us today. We look forward to returning soon with another episode of my GVC podcast. Till then, have a great week.